Oh. 395 South would be right here where all of the traffic is. Okay. Okay. Guess who's in the... Guess who's in the DMV? 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 Hey, K. Renee. Um, you just want to order one book? You know how to cash app? Just cash app $20 to the writer. I just pinned it down here and it's in the caption up here. And then just inbox me so I'll know which book you want. Wait. Oh, no, this ain't the right one. Look, I'm all in the wrong lane. Look, I saw that sale. I saw that book sale. And just inbox me so I know which um, which book you want. And then inbox me your shipping address so I know which one. Hey, girl. Hey, what's up, Bobby, Bobby Bellinger? Hey, girl. Hey, hey, boy. Hey, guess who's getting on 395 South? Guess who just landed in the DMV? At motherfucking Richmond National. I mean, uh, DCA. Reagan National. Hey, girl. Hey, hey, boy. Hey, look at this traffic. Wait, what'd she say I needed to do? Hold on. Let me check this direction. Oh. What'd she, what'd she say I needed to do? So, K. Renee, don't forget. Make sure you tell me which book you want and inbox me your shipping address and I'll ship it while I'm here. I literally just got off the plane, literally just jumped in this little broomstick, this rental broomstick. Budget tried me too. Budget rental car tried me too. Budget rental car, I had ordered it through, I had ordered this rental car through Priceline.com. I gotta look at this direction again. I had to look at that direction again, I'm sorry. Which way am I supposed to go? Niece, I need you to tell me. Continue straight for 12 minutes to exit four, Seminary Road. Oh, exit four. Okay, I got it. I'm over here by Crystal City and Pentagon City and stuff. Y'all better be at that motherfucking busboy and poets on Saturday. 7 to 9 p.m. in Hyattsville. But anyway, budget rental car tried me when I got to the counter. I had reserved the car online and, and on, on, on Priceline. And it said that the car would be $102 from today until Sunday, which I didn't think was bad at all. So I'm feeling all good about myself and stuff. But see, I always rent or reserve more than one rental car just in case they try it. So I also had one at this other place. Is that the Pentagon right there? <laughs> Is that the Pentagon? But anyway, so I had reserved another rental car. So the other car with the other place was 140. This one was 102. Good day thinkers, thought leaders, progressives, and dreamers. I'm Craig the Writer Stewart. And this is the Facebook Live version of So Much to Say, Baby. These are my thoughts and my voice on black shit, white shit, gay shit, and everything in between. I'm on a thousand right now. I'm on a thousand right now. You know how you be feeling all good about yourself and shit? The plane landed safely. There were no emergencies and stuff where you had to get off the plane. There were no emergency landing and stuff like that. I was sitting next to a nice little white couple from Denver, Colorado. I didn't engage this lady into a conversation. She was, all right, girl, be quiet. I, was, I had engaged the lady sitting next to me into a conversation. She was just like, she was reading a book. And so she was like, oh, um, yeah, I'm here for a wedding on Saturday. I said, oh, I'm here for a book signing on Saturday. And so she said, um, oh, what are your books? So, you know, I had pulled her right into the conversation. I told her about all three of the books. She said she was going to go ahead and order the book from, from um, Amazon. I didn't want to pull that white lady into a uh, conversation about the cash app because I didn't want her to think that it was a scam. So I said, go, yeah, go ahead and go order through Amazon. I said, but the books are also on Audible if you want to hear me narrate them. So she said, you need to come out to Colorado Springs. I said, listen, there's a group out in Colorado that wants me to come to Colorado. I said, so maybe I will. So she wrote down my email address and, you know, the title of the book. 
so she could remember to go on Amazon, but she had asked her husband, she said, do you remember, will you remember words never spoken? He said, yes, words never spoken. She said, let me write it down just in case. So she wrote it down. And I believe that this lady is going to go ahead and order that book. It's going to blow her wig. It's going to blow her wig when she read about, it. she said, well, what is it about? What's your memoir about? I said, it's about me being a black gay man. You know, you got to stand in your truth. You know, some of you pull your blackness back when you talk around white people. I said, it's about me being a black gay man. That's what it's about, niece. She said, oh. I said, it's about my brother being in jail for 23 years and my sister's drug addiction. Look at this traffic. Girl, it ain't even moving. It ain't even moving. So anyway, um, what was I talking about initially? I don't know how I got over to this. Let me turn this AC down. Um, how did I get? Oh, budget rental car. So I get to the budget rental car place. So she says, black girl. Here she go with her hands. Yeah, so we're going to have to do a brief credit check to make sure that, um, you know, that's going to decide whether or not you can rent the car or not. So she said, so we, I said, she said, did you know? Because, you know, I don't have a credit card. I don't have credit cards. I had destroyed them back in the day. So I don't use credit cards anymore. Quiet as his cap, he don't use credit cards anymore because he's still trying to repair his credit. He's in the he's in the process of repairing and rebuilding and restoring his credit. So ain't no credit card company gonna trust his ass with no credit card yet. But you know, there's some people that try to act like they don't have credit cards just because they don't want one. No, I would like to have one. <laughs> they just won't give me one right now. But that's okay because my date, my time is coming. But anyway, so right now I pay for cash for everything. So I gave her my little business debit card. You know the one that's connected to the go to the one that's connected to the GoFundMe that you guys have been supporting. Even though it's not Friday, you can still support the GoFundMe. It's at CraigTheWriterStewart.com. Uh-uh, niece. Don't be trying to get over here. Girl, I got insurance on this rental car. I will sue you. And my back is still sore from when I pulled that muscle. I will lay out on this highway. So anyway, got to the counter. And she says, yes, we do a credit check. I said, y'all doing a credit check? So I'm sitting there thinking to myself, well, see, thank God I already got the other reservation for the other rental car place because they not on that fuck shit. And see, here's the thing. When I reserved the rental car online, on Priceline, the only thing that it said was if you use a debit card, you have to, they have to show, they have to see your flight itinerary. That girl ain't asked me, even, she didn't even ask me about my flight itinerary. And they said they take an additional $200. They put a two, an additional $200 hold on your card. And then they'll give it back to you once you return the card. She ain't saying nothing about Dane saying nothing about no credit check. So I said, y'all do a credit check. I said, no, I didn't know anything about that. So then she says, well, did you want to go ahead and take the uh, minimum or the maximum coverage out on for insurance? I was like, insurance? Because who gets insurance on a rental car? You use your insurance. You use your own insurance. So she said, oh, we don't allow that. I said, so I have to get an insurance through you guys? She said, yeah, you can either get the minimum, which is $10 a day, or you can get the maximum, which is $30 a day. I said, give me the minimum. I said, y'all full of surprises at the counter. Y'all act like y'all don't know I clean up well when I have a haircut. I know I look like an aboriginal person from Tuesday to Thursday. I know I look like a, a, a damn cave person, but y'all know what I'm capable of when I get this when I get this fresh line. Y'all already know what I'm capable of. Stop acting like that. So anyway, by the time she rang up the car insurance and all that other bullshit, the tax and shit, it was $139. But it was still cheaper than the other place. Cause like I told you, I had reserved a rental car from two different places just in case they came with that fuck shit. Put your earphones on. I know it's the middle of the afternoon, but you know, it's still, I cuss. So anyway, it was still a few dollars cheaper than the other place. So I went on and reserved through budget. And so I went on and got the car and I ran out here and got in the car. Got my little, my little mount. That's why I got my little mount. So I knew I was going to get on here and talk to y'all. Because see, tonight, tonight at nine o'clock, I may not be able to come on. Well, let me stop, not say Mike. I'm not going to be able to come on tonight at nine o'clock. So that's why I figured I'd come on now. Go ahead and get it out. I know y'all gonna talk shit because I'm not gonna be able to come on at nine o'clock. But I'm on here now. Look at Lola. She yelled, why? Why you can't come on tonight at nine? Why? See, Petra, you gotta keep it, you gotta keep your earphones handy, niece. 
because you never know what I'm going to say. Why y'all got, listen, I'm on here now. You don't need me to come on at nine o'clock tonight. I need some privacy. I got a date. Isn't that that line from Tina Turner, what's love got to do with it? Look at Marcellus. What the hell are you going to be doing that you can't? It ain't enough that I'm on here right now. I got to come on at 9 o'clock too. Jennifer Lewis said in the movie, she said, listen, I have a date. I need some privacy. Y'all know that line from the movie? Ooh, look at H-Town. Look at H-Town Henny talking about you must be with LTR at 9 o'clock. Ah! H-Town Henny said, you know what? You Isn't your LTR in the DMV? Y'all, ooh, y'all so perceptive. Practically psychic. Y'all very perceptive. Practically psychic. Y'all something else. <laughs> ah! Look, say this, how you know what we need? Listen, I'm giving you what you need right now. Kim Bledsoe, you picking up what I'm putting down. She said, get that whoop whoop in. Listen, I got the build. I got the build. I can't just build on this career. I got the build on that personal life too, amen? I'm not standing you up, Rochelle. I'm on here now, niece. If you want to come back at 9 o'clock and rewatch this video then be my guest. I'll repost this video at 9. Did you Did you want me to do that? Did they, did they want me to repost the video at 9 o'clock? I can, I can repost this video at 9. <sighs> okay, Cynthia says she can't, she can't sleep without her 9 p.m. fix, so I'm gonna go ahead and repost this video at 9. What's up, Detroit? What's up, Detroit? Marika, I'm not even gonna pay that no mind. This is how white folks do when they don't want to be involved, when they don't want to be, when they don't want to be implicated, right? You know how I've said this to you guys before, and that white people don't get sensitive because this is how y'all do. You know, like say for instance, you're somewhere and something happens. Let's say you know, you're the victim of a crime or you were just involved in a car accident. And the only person that saw what happened was a white person. And you're like, ma'am, could you tell the, can you tell the police what happened? And they're, they're giving you this look like this. Like they don't want to get involved. And you're like, girl, you just saw what happened. And they're like, and you're like, oh, this bitch, she trying to set me up. Thank you, Terry Davis. See, Terry says she has the good morning ringtone, the good day thinkers, thought leaders, progressives, and dreamers ringtone. That's available on iOS, Apple. She says, so she can spare one night. She can spare one night without me. But what she don't know is that I may not be able to come on tomorrow night at nine either. I'll be on tomorrow, but it might not be tomorrow night at nine. Y'all know how white folks do when they don't want to be implicated. They're like, I'm not getting in that black shit with y'all. I don't want to give you my phone number. I'm not trying to be a witness to anything. And so they're looking at you like. Yeah, that look that, is, that, that look says, sorry for you, can't help. They're looking at you like. Listen, I'm going to be on here tomorrow. It just might not be at nine o'clock. <laughs> Hey girl, hey, hey boy, hey, good day thinkers, thought leaders, progressives, and dreamers. I got my 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 wallet that Bianca gave me for my birthday. I don't travel with it. What's she saying? The GPS, she whispering this shit. Do I have her turned down? Where's exit four? Hey Mary Fong Fong Kang. Is it Fong Kang? Mary Fong Kang. Is that exit four? Yeah, that's it right there. There's exit four. I'm hungry. I just got off the plane. I ate one before I got on the plane, but I'm about to go and get me a, a little something to eat, a little light nosh. Girl, oh, what? To the right to Seminary Road West. I forgot I had turned her down. 
I forgot I had turned her down because she was being so rude when I was telling my story. Um, but listen, I'm in I'm in the DMV. I'm gonna be at the Bus Boy and Poets on Saturday in Hyattsville. Stay to the right to Seminary Road West. Okay, stay to the right, going west. Okay, niece, I'm following your direction. I'm following your instruction. Dr. Young and I are meeting tomorrow. We're gonna have a little light lunch. And we're gonna go, we're gonna go shopping tomorrow because you know our 20th anniversary. Hey Michelle um Felton. And girl, stop all that yelling coming in here. What? Girl, I had to I had to look at that direction real quick because she wasn't talking. She Grandpa, wasn't talking. Then turn left to Seminary Road West. Oh, wait a minute. Turn left to Seminary Road West. Um. Yeah, so we're, our our twentieth anniversary for when we graduated college. We graduated in nineteen ninety eight. It's coming up in October. It's October twenty sixth through the twenty eighth. So we're gonna be in Hampton. So you know we gotta go and find us something to wear. Because I have not been to my homecoming since 2001. And you know I cannot be going down there with the stuff that's in my closet. So we're going to look for some things to wear tomorrow. And then on Saturday, we're going to be down at the Bus Boy and Poets at 7 o'clock. Now listen, bring your own money. I know you guys have been supporting the GoFundMe faithfully, but I am not paying for the dinner at Bus Boy and Poets. have enough for tax and tip in 900 feet turn left on North Beauregard Street bring bring cash because we would hate for your debit card to get declined <laughs> if your card gets declined I'm going to tip out of the restaurant with my wide rim hat on, hat on my wide rim church hat I'm saying I don't know that lady I, I don't know her. I don't know her either. It's a white guy over here with his butt hanging out his pants. Looking like he want to get tapped. Listen. Listen. Have your, have your debit card or credit card or cash. Amen. You're welcome to bring whoever you'd like. It's open. Is this where I'm turning? Yes, this is it. I am starving. You ever get really hungry like right in an instant? Turn left on North Beauregard Street. Ray Mel, Ray Mel you're going to be at work when we go shopping tomorrow. Ray Mel, you can be at work when we go shopping. Don't act like that. I've charged Dr. Young with the responsibility of finding a decent, excuse me, a decent vegan friendly or Half vegan. A mile. Turn right on Reading Avenue. Vegan friendly or vegan <gasps> restaurant for us to for us to eat in. Now listen, I'm nearing my destination. I'm nearing my destination. In 1,000 feet, turn right. Oh, that red light just caught me. Dan Adder, that's your Obama phone. Am I freezing for anybody else or is it just Dan Adder's phone? Is it Dan Adder's phone that's freezing up? <laughs> Petra, stop being uh, messy now. Marie, 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 Marie Jones. 
Thank you, Coco. See, that's Dan. That is a uh, raggedy phone service. Girl, that's your shit. Turn right on Reading Avenue. All right. He's turning. Let me get my... um. Thank you, Johnny. Uh, all right, listen. I got to get off of here. Let me get my lips ready. You never know when somebody want a little sugar. You never know when somebody might want a little sugar. You've arrived. All right, so listen, I may not, I won't be available tonight, right, at 9 o'clock. All right? So I just wanted to come on and say that I love you and that I appreciate you for supporting what I do. I had some orders that I was supposed to ship out today, but I didn't get a chance to before I jumped on my flight. So I'm going to ship them either while I'm here or as soon as I get back. Well, no, I'm going to ship them when I get back. Because I signed the books already. And they're home. Okay? So I appreciate you guys with your patience. Okay? Remember I had my little back issue, which is still a little tender. My back issue is still a little tender. All right? So you have, you guys have... Oh, look at this parking space right here in the front. Hmm? <laughs> look, at how, look how God works that out. Ooh, that back. Uh, Lola, cut it out now. I'm going to pull out my uh, switch and whip your behind. Cut it out. All that complaining. God said, be grateful. Be ye grateful. God, no, Danetta, you ain't going to see me tomorrow. It's Saturday. Girl, today is Thursday. She talking about she's going to see me tomorrow. She be the only one sitting at Bus Boy and Poets. Talking about, where's everybody at? She can be inboxing me. I'm like, girl, I'm at Tyson's Corner. What you doing at uh, Bus Boy and Poets? Girl, it's Saturday. It's Saturday, niece. Let me get my um, wallet and stuff. All right, so let me um, let me get out of here. I appreciate you guys. I really, really do. Thank you so much for supporting what I do. Listen, I'm gonna say this and then I'm gonna get off of here. I was thinking yesterday. Just how fortunate I am for all of you because, and I know I say this all the time, but I just don't, I don't think that I can ever say it enough. And part of me saying it to you is to offer my appreciation, but more so to honor God. Because I have always promised him, one of my prayers used to be, one of my prayers to God used to be, make me effective. Use me, use my work, use my gift, use my light. I'm all in the middle of a, a powerful moment and here got my brother calling me on the phone. So anyway, I used to pray, use my light, make me effective, use my gift, right? I, I, I hate when people call me back to back like this. Stop doing that shit. But I used to say, make me effective, use my light, use my gift, and do not bless me with it until I'm ready. But more importantly, do not bless me with it until I can appreciate it. Do not bless me with it if I'm going to levitate. If my head is going to get too big, if I'm going to come up off the ground. Don't give it to me until I'm ready. So I'm so appreciative. And I think the reason why gratitude oozes from me. Is because that was a part of my prayer. Don't give it to me until I'm going to really appreciate it. If I'm not going to appreciate it, if I'm going to take it for granted, hold it from me until I'm going to be grateful for it. And so I always want to say to you that I'm grateful, that I'm thankful because I was thinking yesterday or today, it was I think it was yesterday, the way that I'm buying up these plane tickets to come to see y'all black asses, <laughs> like, that's unreal to me. It's unreal to me. I'm looking because there's people walking and shit. And, you know, I'm not in my familiar environment. So I'm looking to see who's, you know, because I see some Africans walking. I see some uh, uh, Muslim folk with garb on walking. I see some white folk. I see a bunch of people. Walk, so, you know, I got to make sure. I got to see who's who. 
So <clears throat> I'm so grateful because as you know, it's become so busy for me right now. You know, like I was just in Baltimore, then I was in Jacksonville or in, in Charlotte or somewhere, but I was in Baltimore, Charlotte, Jacksonville, LA. Now I'm in Maryland Friday, not tomorrow, but next Friday I'll be in, um, Charleston. And then the day after that, next Saturday, I'll be in Greenville, South Carolina. So the fact that, that, that all of this stuff is, is converging at once, I'm so grateful. And to be able to order books, have the money to buy the books, to have them for these signings, and to still be able to ship them out to you guys, your orders. Hey, Johnny, I see you. And to be able to send your orders out to you, and to be able to purchase purchase um, plane tickets and rent cars and be able to pay my bills. Like, what I know to be true is God will always dream a bigger dream for you than you can dream for yourself. So I, I had a big dream. I had a big dream. But he always reveals things that you never even imagined because he will always reveal things to you that you can't even see. There are things that he will reveal for you that you will never be able to see until he actually reveals it to you. And so that's where I am right now. And that is that is one of my, my hopes for you all. Yes, Tonette. That's one of my hopes for you. If you have a dream and you might be in the midst of trying, your hands might be peeling and bleeding and burning because you're trying to hold on to that rope. You're trying to hold on to possibility. And you want to let it go because it's burning. But I'm here to tell you, listen, I was holding on to that rope for so long. I was holding on to that rope. There were so many moments and so many times, so many seconds that I wanted to give up on the dream. There were so many moments that I wanted to give up on the dream. But there was always this little whisper. There was always, and I talk about this in the first book. There was always this little whisper. There was always this little glimmer of hope. Just a little, just a little speckle of light. I could see it at the end of the tunnel. The tunnel was so damn dark, but there was like this little flicker of light that I could see in the distance. And it was like, Craig, that's your ship. That's your ship coming in. It's going to come. Now, I don't know. You don't know where or when that ship is going to finally set sail. But you just have to be able to see it. And if you can see it, you can have it. And that's not just about your career. That's about love. You may be wanting to have children. And the doctor could have told you, listen. Niece, you're not going to be able to have kids. We see endometriosis. We see this. But girl, listen, if you can see it, you can have it. You can have it. And it may not be in the traditional form. You may not be able to give birth to children. But maybe, you've been, maybe you're being called to adopt. Maybe you're being called to adopt. You know, it, it, you, have, you have to be, learn to look underneath the surface. Because it's not always about the, it's not always on top. Sometimes it's underneath what you think. And so I was saying to my friend, Nani, she came by yesterday with the baby, with her baby. And um, I was saying to her, Nani, I didn't dream this stuff was going to happen. Like the way that you guys send me gifts, the way that you just send money indiscriminately to my cash app or to the GoFundMe. You do that even when I don't come on here and, and promote or push it. You guys do that at your own volition, at your own volition, your own free will. I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for that. And I believe that it's happening because of all of the years behind me that I was investing. I believe that it's happening now because of all of the years that I was praying up until this point. You understand what I'm saying? Like you're praying for something right now. It may take three years, the gestation period for that dream or that prayer to be birthed. It may take three more years from now, but that you keep praying, keep praying because eventually it has to come. It ha l Listen, that's the law of reciprocity. Whatever you put into the universe, it has to come back. Life would be unfair if it didn't. And see, you have to hold God accountable. You say, God, now you said 
That's what I used to say to him. I'm like, now God, you told me to go ahead and write these books. You told me to go ahead and, and, and be in journey as a writer. You told me to do this stuff. So I'm expecting you to deliver. That's how I used to talk to God. That's how you got, that's how you got to talk to him. And you say to him, I don't know when it's going to happen. But it's the law of attraction, yes. But it's also the law of reciprocity. Whatever you put into the universe, it has to come back. It's like a boomerang. Whatever you throw out, it has to come back. So you may be going to meetings, sending emails, making phone calls, and nothing's coming back right now. But I promise you, it's an investment. It has to come back eventually. It may be three months from now. It may be three years from now, but it's coming back. And it may not come back from the person that you're calling. It may not come back from the person that you're, that you're, that you're, whose attention you're trying to get to, but it's going to come back. It has to come back because it's like a boomerang. Whatever you throw out, it has to come back. That's goodwill. That's good intention. And it's also evil. Now, if you, if you walk around here being old, nasty, nephy, oh, that comes back too. That comes back too. So I just wanted to take another moment to say to you that I appreciate you. I'm really, really grateful to God. I'm so grateful that um, I didn't quit, that I didn't give up. Look, Dan, that's the, Dan out of time, she froze. And girl, girl, she didn't she did got froze in the, in the highest part of the testimony, child. Child, girl, if she don't cut, if she don't throw the entire phone and service away, girl, just get you a new phone and then come back and listen to the video, girl. Girl, her, oh, child, she yelling, her shit frozen. I see Johnny talking about see you at nine o'clock. Listen, but listen, I just wanted to say that to you guys. So I, I don't want you to think that I, I, I always want you to know that I appreciate you. I always want you to know that. And so what I was saying to my friend Nanise yesterday, let me finish that. I never imagined getting gifts like birthday gifts from you guys. That's when it just, all of this stuff started happening where you started sending me stuff. I never imagined that. Um, and then the stuff that Tonette sends and Dr. Young sends and Carol Cole has sent, Bianca and Michelle Yates and all of you that have sent me stuff. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, don't get offended if I didn't say your name. Many of you have sent me things. I appreciate it all and I keep it all. I keep it all. I haven't mentioned the stuff that, like Tonette sent me so much stuff. I'm using all of that stuff constantly. Thank you, Cynthia. Cynthia has sent me stuff. Yeah, Cynthia sent me that um, that copper grill, you know, and she sent me some other stuff too, paprika, but um, and that and that 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 lime sauce or stuff that I like. But you know, I'm always using this stuff. But I I appreciate you guys doing it. I really really do. I don't take it for granted. It's not just laid up in the cabinet or closet. I use that stuff. So um, thank you very much. Thank you for supporting what I do. Yes, that, the tahine. All right? So you guys have an amazing night. I I did my oil pulling. I used that charcoal um, toothpaste that Tarnett just sent me and the um, mouthwash. I love you guys, too. I really, really do. I used to wonder, like, why do people say that they love somebody that they don't know? I don't know, y'all. But I do love you. I love your support. And I love you for being here. I really do. Reciprocity. That's a good one. All right. So thank you so very much. I appreciate you. And I'll, and I'll pop in here. I'll pop back in. All right. Have fun. Hang in there. Whatever it is that you're going through, hang in there. If you're holding on to a dream, if you're holding out for love or children, just hang in there. You got to keep trusting. You got to keep trusting. All right, bye.